Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. Alright, here's what I'm seeing this afternoon. So the snow we had in the Wasatch today will come to an end tonight and then we'll have to wait but the next storm system the next pattern shift is going to be significant for a lot of the intermountain west 226 through 227 heavy snow across the wasatch widespread and that snow would also be heavy in the tetons 226 through 228 in colorado 20 226 27 and early 228 until then colorado gets some light to moderate snow tonight overnight into tomorrow morning so skiing tomorrow across the central and northern mountains of Colorado should be pretty good with some new powder. Um, that uh, pattern shift will also bring in strong winds because we're going to have the northern branch buckling uh, to the south out of Canada, merging up with the subtropical branch, so strong winds 226, 227 across um, the mountains of uh, the Intermountain West. Um, and then it's a waiting game because after that storm system moves through, the next one that will come in on the northern branch is going to get hung up and move very slow through the Pacific Northwest, British Columbia, and the northern tier, 229, 31, and maybe even 32. And there's going to be some big accumulations up there uh, during that period. I'll show you those coming up. Nothing has really changed for the northeast. Just some light snow, 223, 228, and 229. So here is water vapor satellite imagery this afternoon. First thing I want to mark is this little storm system right here crossing Utah and Colorado. That is what's generating Utah snow and what will generate Colorado snow overnight tonight into tomorrow. And then there's this area of low pressure that broke off from the main trough and it's going to be moving towards California. Now here's the big main low up here. That's going to come up through Alaska, run down through Canada, and then that's going to be part of that big pattern shift, 226, 27, and 28. The whole thing's going to drop down through the Intermountain West. So again, there's a lot of pieces coming together that will produce significant snowfall. 226, 227, early 228. Here's the jet stream forecast by end of day today. There's tomorrow, there's 223. Here comes that storm system approaching California. Now here's the critical time, 226, when everything starts to come together. Northern branch, big trough develops, it buckles to the south. Got the southern branch bringing up energy. Both branches will bring energy and storm systems in. Um, and we're gonna get orographic snow. So we're gonna have a few different ways to generate heavy snow with this event. 226, there's 227 west-northwest flow, um, exiting on 228. Now watch this pattern. So after that storm system goes through, it's a waiting game because we're going to have to wait on this. And because it's a larger storm system now than in previous forecasts, you can see the big dip in the jet up through the North Pacific there. Um, it's going to take its time. It slows down, in other words. So it's going to take longer for that big trough to rotate down into the lower 48. So because of the slow movement, looking at heavy snow accumulations through BC, Washington, Oregon, and potentially parts of the northern tier during that transition. Here's some uh, precip on top of this. So forecast radar, um, that's about the current state of affairs at 530. You've got some light snow um, continuing over the Wasatch, some light snow central and northern mountains of Colorado. And then it's all mostly Colorado overnight into tomorrow, and then it fades. 223 is dry, 224 mainly dry for the Intermountain. And then everything starts to merge here on 226. You've got two pieces of energy, two different jets merging here. Really strong frontal boundary coming south. And this is where we're going to start to pick up the big time accumulations. Montana, Idaho, Tetons, Wasatch, eventually Colorado. Watch what happens. 227, it slams in and then it rolls through with some seriously heavy snow. And then again, it's a waiting game because look at everything. That west-northwest flow pivots back and it dries out. And the whole, the whole axis is shifting here because the storm is deepening. It's a big trough and it's taking its time. And so everything gets focused up to the Pacific Northwest and into BC. Eventually, the whole thing will, will rotate in, but it's just going to take its time. Okay, look at the latest totals. My latest grand totals map, rest of today through 3-1, still looking at probably 1 to 2, 2 and a half feet through the Wasatch. And the bulk of that now comes on 226 and 227. So it's just like it all comes at once now. Um, about a foot for the Tetons, one to two feet in Colorado, especially Western Slope and Southwest Colorado. You're gonna get snow 226 in the afternoon, all of 227 and early 228. So we're gonna tr crank out some pretty big totals. I mean, got a solid two feet there on my map with that storm system. So it's gonna be, um, it's going to be pretty solid, I think. And look at the numbers in the Pacific Northwest and interior BC. Uh, again, I'll break it down by time period. Well, we could, could be looking at grand totals of, you know, a couple of feet up there around Kicking Horse, Revelstoke, one to two feet 
um, even possible uh, into Sunshine Village and over to Marmot Basin if this pattern holds. And 50, 60, 70 inches up there in parts of Washington and parts of the coastal range of BC, 30 to 40 in Oregon. So this is going to be an important pattern. Let me break it down by time period. So the rest of today through tomorrow, most of the snow is in Colorado with the storm system moving through. And it's overnight into tomorrow morning. And then it starts to shut off. But all right, here's the next time period. Everything's transitioning. We're waiting for the northern branch. The snow, bulk of it is up there, Pacific Northwest and BC. Next time period's the big one. When everything comes crashing to the south, we feed that big moisture um, in our graphics into the Wasatch and in the parts of western and southwest Colorado. You can see the numbers one to two, two and a half feet in some places. Uh, big numbers in Washington and Oregon and about a foot in the Sierra as well. All right, here's the final time frame 229 to 31 uh, with the storm holding up there in the Pacific Northwest and BC. That's where the big numbers are going to be. And then the Northeast, again, nothing has really changed here, just light accumulations 223 maybe even mixing with rain at the base areas, 223, and then some snow on 228 and 229. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, afternoon mountain weather update. Always appreciate you tuning in here, and take care.